It is Saturday afternoon, and we just got a little more time here in the exhibit hall at the Origins Game Fair before it closes for the day. And I get to finally meet Sarah Erickson from Renegade Game Studios. And I'll be the first to admit, and you may decide you want to just completely walk off frame, the video ends, and I have tears running down my <laughs> face. I have never played a Renegade game even here. <laughs> Just kidding. No, this is a great opportunity yes. because now I can show you how wonderful it is on the other side, the renegade side. <laughs> Come to the light side, right? Exactly. Right. Not the dark side. You guys got cookies too, right? Oh, Come of course. Come to the light side. Yeah. They've also got cookies. So let's chat a little bit about some of your titles. And first off, I'm familiar with the company and I know a little bit about some of your titles. Awesome. And I do know that you have really done exceptional well, because you've designed all the games yourself. Well, it was all me, obviously. Right, of yeah. course. <laughs> but you've done the company's done exceptionally well on the award circuit. We have been recognized in a lot of different award ceremonies, and we really thank both the press and our fans for really helping us get there. We couldn't do it without you guys, but we're really happy that people just love the games that we put out. And the awards that you've won are not the sorts of awards that usually are preceded by a check to a company to receive that award too. <laughs> no, not usually. <laughs> so we are standing in front of Clank, a deck building adventure. Actually, did I get enough of that exclamation point, Clank? It needs lots of exclamation There you go, points, yeah. a little more energy there, <laughs> which uh, has done exceptionally well for you, and it looks like a fantastic kind of, kind of dungeon delve game. It is, it's a deck building game, so mm -hmm. you already know how to play. It's if a you've deck ever... building adventure. It's a deck building adventure, yeah, because it's more than just a deck building game. Sure. You really are trying to see if you can push your luck and get bigger and better treasure way down there in the bottom of the depths of the dungeon, but it's kind of dangerous down there and there is a really huge angry dragon that you're stealing treasure from. Yeah. So you don't want to make too much noise. Right. Yeah. Because if you make a clank, I guess your adventure's going to be over. It could be, yeah. And it's kind of interesting because you might really want to go down there and get the best treasure, but somebody else might think it's a little too dangerous. So depending on who you're playing with, they may run in, grab a treasure, and then try and run out, and that puts you on a clock. If sure. you can't get out before the end of that four turns after somebody else gets out, right. the dungeon collapses, and you may get stuck down there and die. But it'll be a good story. And you also have an expansion for that as well that came out recently. Yep. Uh, Sunken Treasure? Yep. The Clank Sunken Treasures is the first expansion for the game. Certainly not the last. And ta-da! <laughs> Yeah, usually uh, evergreen titles don't end at one or two. Well, it makes sense. You fans love the game, right. and they're very excited for more content. And the original game did have a double-sided board on it already. Okay. The expansion, another double-sided board, plus a bunch of new cards for content. There's and so much gaming goodness, my head is about to explode. <laughs> well, don't let it explode quite yet, because you have more to there's talk about. going to be more that right. we can't talk about yet. Of course. But we don't want to leave you hanging for too long. Sure. And then your big release here at Origins is Flatline, and it is ranking pretty nicely in some hot list, hotness charts, I should say. Yeah, we love this game because it is by designer Kane Klenko, who did Fuse. It's set in the same universe. It's a cooperative timed game, and real time, you are trying to save patients in the medical bay of the same ship where you were diffusing bombs in Fuse. Sure. So it's got a lot of similarities to that. If you love Fuse, you absolutely have to check out Flatline. But, you know, you won't have any idea because you haven't played Fuse yet, right? <laughs> No, so sad. But you'll get there eventually. So I'm sitting here going, it's all it's all a foreign language coming in. If you love the fuse. <laughs> well, everybody loves to use, so you'll definitely have to try it. <laughs> it's, it's a 10-minute game where you are all working together to roll dice. And if you like Star Wars, cards. you'll love Buck Rogers in the 25th century. <laughs> No, no, said. it's way better than that. <laughs> so, Clank, yeah, we are uh, Flatline. Right. You know, that game. Uh, Flatline is by same designer as Fuse. You are rolling dice really fast. You're trying to save these patients. It's an intense experience. So, myself, being a really horrible gamer, everybody's just going to be dead 
like as soon as I pick up the dice. So that's going to give the advantage to all the other players. I'm going to be happy I'm not one of your patients. <laughs> but there's something that... How many that, players is, is Flatland? It goes up to five. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can play with a big group, which is really handy. Comes with incredible dice. They're all custom dice that have these crazy symbols on them, alien technology that you're using to save these patients. Really fun to look at. Super great game. And there's something that Fuse, Flatline, and Clank all have in common. Do you know They're, about this? They are from Renegade. <laughs> Renegade, but they also all have a digital companion app. So ah. if you download the Renegade companion app, you get extra content for all three of those games for free. And it also kind of just uh, makes the experience much smoother, flows a little nicer with the app? They're all a little different. So with okay. Fuse, it's a digital timer that adds atmosphere. Sure. It has a voiceover that it's encourages you. It's and just... Yeah. It gets louder and louder. It does, yeah. And Flatline also does that, but because Flatline Line is a little bit more of a deeper game with more stuff going on. You also have some helper text that will walk you through each step right. in the round, and then you have your one minute timer because it's a series of one minute rounds. Okay. So that's what Fuse and Flatline do. And then when you get to Clank in the digital app, it adds a ton of content. We've got a solo experience you can play against the app, sure. and it also has an extra adventure stuff that you can play through with your full group. So okay. things will happen, it's sort of global effects that just occur randomly and either good or bad things will occur. And then coming up, I forget exactly the release date. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a Gen Con release, but you've got Ex Libris. Ex Libris is coming out hopefully I for Gen Con. I know about that game. So in that game, everybody plays a librarian and they all travel around the library telling people to be quiet <laughs> and explaining how that they the other people in the library can log into Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> Although that's not that's the game like, we made, it does sound like fun. Yeah, I was going to say, that's what, unfortunately, a lot of librarians have to do. It is. My mom's a librarian, actually, and she, she does do some of that. You know, they're... In all seriousness, people don't realize all the stuff librarians do. It's not just simply, oh, you can find that book there. It's or very say, true. Shh, they help people get jobs. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's a community they do amazing. I, I love librarians, obviously. And Ex Libris is a very fun library focused game where you are trying to create the best alphabetized library possible. With the rarest tomes, correct? With the rare tomes, yes. And it's a worker placement game. And in this game, you send your workers out to various locations. Sure. And that's how you take your actions. But those action locations change every round. Okay. So unlike regular worker placement games, you can't just have this plan that you do over and over again. Right, exactly. You really have to be flexible. I go first, so I always put my one token here and then and okay, I do that. right. So it's gonna, gonna yeah. kind of shake things up. Absolutely, and not only that, but every player has a special character power and a special meeple, and the meeples are unbelievably fun. We have a goblin you can play, goblin librarians. Okay. Makes sense, right? Sure. You could maybe play as a ghost librarian and okay. have a little ghost meeple that's super cute, or get a little bit crazier and play as a gelatinous cube. And and it's a clear cube with some Which bubbles I, in there. I would think they would have a, a very difficult time actually handling books, but that's just me. I'm not exactly that's why sure they have how that the works. Workers going out there to get them for them because the cube can't carry it. They do really Got need it. their assistance. Okay, all yep. right. Good deal. Yeah. It's a super fantastic game. That's our big box release for Gen Con. But we do have another two Gen Con releases. Do you want to hear about it? Yes. Them? Awesome. Yes, because unfortunately, our viewers sitting at home around the bus or wherever they're watching this through maybe at a library through their Wi-Fi <laughs> they're not going to be able to, to be like wow okay this is at Origins I'll just go to Columbus right now and get it because Origins will be over for most people to see this video Oh, so, so let's sad. let's pump them up for Gen Con so you've got two more releases we have what you got cooking? Atlas Enchanted Lands is coming out it's a game by J. Alex Cavern and in that game, you are trying to collect sets of cards. So it's a pretty uh, simple card game as far as the components go, but as far as 
it's a depth of strategy. You're trying to guess what cards other people are going to be laying down in a grid pattern. And there's a lot of thinky puzzliness to it. It's a very cool game. If I remember correctly, doesn't it have sort of an enchanted forest pixie style artwork to it? Yeah, fairies in an enchanted yeah, right. forest okay. with absolutely beautiful art from Beth Sobel. And it has been a pleasure working with her. So Ooh. I think everyone's going to love the way that turned out. And then you've got one other Gen Con. One other Gen Con release. We're very excited to be releasing Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Card Game. So it's based off of the Scott Pilgrim graphic novels, all the grand artwork from Brian Lee O'Malley at okay. Oni Press. And it is going to be super fun because if you love Scott Pilgrim, you can play as one of those characters. And it's a deck building game, so you start with a special deck from that character. It's absolutely unique. Nice. So, And they all feel like the characters. If you're playing as Knives Chow, she really feeds off of drama, and so there are drama cards in her deck that actually do good things for her. Usually those cards would be kind of dead cards in your deck. Right. Scott Pilgrim also feeds off of drama, but he really likes music too, so he sure. gets special powers from having music cards. All the different characters, depending on what they did in the comic books, you're going to see that come through okay. in the card game. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Super fun. Now, if I may ask Sarah, because like I said, I've never played any of the Renegade games. What is the title that, that's currently out or that's been out for a little bit and you want to see a little more love for? Oh, that you feel is, man. Is really deserving of. I mean, I know they all win awards and things like that, but, but what's a game that you think maybe um, the gaming public should take a, take a look at and maybe they, they've missed it along the way or like me, missed them all? Well, if you missed all of them, then a few that I would just that start with. Is Jeff. <laughs> I, I think all of them really have gotten a lot of love. We've been really lucky in that aspect. But a few that were really showing off this weekend that just got reprinted because there was so much excitement about them um, include Covert, which is another King Clanko game, but it's more of a Euro game than some of his other things. It has a set collection aspect, but this really cool, funky dice manipulation where each turn you are going to be placing dice onto these circles. But the circle only has spaces for one through six. So if okay. I place a two on that circle, now the only available spots are the one and the three. So depending on what dice other people have placed, it opens up other action spots that you can okay. take. So it's got this really weird dice worker placement manipulation part of the board. And then you're moving around on this map. And it's Cold War era uh, style map that you... Uh, that's the name Covert. Covert. So you're... A covert spy group and you're trying to collect all these pieces of information so you okay. move around on the map collect information and then turn that in for points very fantastic game we sold out of it pretty early after it released and just barely got it back in so it's your chance to pick it up and you said you had another one that was just reprinted correct did you say two we've had oh man so it many just, of our games just have reprinted. just been reprinted but another one that everything i'm really <laughs> excited about that did just get reprinted is Castles of Caladale. Now look, we've talked about a lot of different games, and that's the first one Sarah reached back to grab to actually hold up there. So it must have a, have a soft spot in your heart for it? It really does, because it feels like a basic tile laying game where you draft a tile, you put it into your castle that you're building, all of the sides have to match up. So we all already have played games like that, but... Not me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but this is the only game I know I don't understand I know what of. you mean by worker placement. <laughs> you get you get people jobs. I don't. <laughs> You might be in the rod industry. Did, did, were you looking for a different convention when you walked in? <laughs> I thought these were comic books. <laughs> well, uh, that's over there. So, so there, there's the, the twist to it. The twist. That makes it not like every other tile placement Exactly. Game. The twist is that all of those tiles you've been collecting, you can rearrange any of them at any time. Oh, okay. So 
if you get to the second to last round in the game and that perfect tile finally shows up, right. you can stick it in anywhere and rearrange stuff to make it fit and make your castle as beautiful as you want by the end of the game. Nice. So you're never stuck with this hodgepodge of things that just don't make sense. Mm -hmm. You make it perfect, which I think appeals to a lot of board gamers. And it's just a blast to play. I've loved it every time I've gotten it to the table. It's a different tile laying game because it's called Carcassonne. <laughs> Definitely different than that game. <laughs> Sarah, any final uh, thoughts or any final titles that you want to mention to our audience? There were two other titles that, actually, I take it back. There were three titles that we released here in addition to Flatline that we didn't talk about yet. Do you want to cover those? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I uh, did, uh, okay, I'm going to stretch my brain here. Uh, is it Shin Shinhu Ubu House or something? It's like a, am I close on? Shiba Inu House. Shiba Inus are these adorable Japanese dogs. And in Shiba Inu House, you're actually building a dog house for them. Mm -hmm. But that's not one of the three. Okay. That one is a very cute, cute game. Say. And we have a handcrafted dog house. Yeah. It is already out. So Flip Ships is... Oh, yeah. It's like a dexterity game, isn't it? It is. It's a cooperative dexterity game. And in that one, you are trying to save the universe from these horrible alien invaders. You flip your ship onto the alien cards. If you can hit them, then you destroy that card. If you can't, then they all creep towards you at a drastic pace. And if you can't destroy them before they hit your base, they deal damage to you. Okay. So it's a very fun game. So much tension as you flip that ship and hope it hits the enemies. Super fun to play. Because the enemies actually flip tokens at, back at you and you're like... <laughs> Dangerous also. <laughs> gotta, gotta take these guys out fast. <laughs> That's right. So you got Flip Ships. Flip Ships okay. and Sentient, which is by J. Alex Cavern. It, it is uh, right here, actually. There, there it is. This one just barely came out here at Origins. It'll be in friendly local game stores in July. And in this game, you are trying to be an evil corporation who is creating sentient robots. Right. And it's a dice manipulation area control game with some set collection as well. So there's a lot of puzzliness to this game. And and everything that you do, every choice you make, has cascading effects that are all interwoven into each other. It's a very neat game, very thinky. I personally love this one. So, and if I take recall a uh, the info that I saw about it, uh, there's, as far as the robotics and things like that, it's it's some of it is very real world based, not just complete fantasy, correct? It's in the future, but not the far future right, is exactly. the setting. We're not talking R2-D2. You know, no. Every, where everybody yeah. has a droid. You're, you're trying to create that sentient robot, that sentient AI. Right? Yeah, yep, definitely. So cool. it's a very cool art style and really, really beautiful box. Same artist as Lotus. Nice. Some of our other beautiful games. Um, so that's one. And then we had one last one, The Fox in the Forest. It's a two-player trick-taking game. I gotta be honest, that is one I that is completely out of the blue for me. That I haven't even seen a press release for that, so it, tell me all about that, Sarah. The Fox in the Forest, we sold out of it in the first 15 minutes of the show, okay. so that's probably why you haven't seen copies out on our booth. Right. Um, but The Fox in the Forest, two-player trick-taking game, beautiful artwork, and it's got a really cool scoring dynamic that makes a two-player game work. Because in a lot of trick-taking games, you just want as many tricks as possible, and each trick's worth a point, you get a bunch of points, done. Not the case in The Fox in the Forest. In this game, there is a non-linear scoring pattern, depending on how many tricks you take, you'll get a different number of points, but if you're too greedy and you take them all, then or a lot of them, then you're not going to score anything, and the person who only took a couple will get a whole bunch of points. Sure. And then in between, there's a sweet spot where you want to be to get the most points. So as we go back and forth, I might be wanting to win tricks, and then you start wanting to win tricks, and we go back and forth until the very end of those 13 cards. So very beautiful artwork, great dynamic gameplay, and now you can finally play a trick-taking game with your significant other or friend without having to find four people to play. And does one player play the fox and the other player is the forest? <laughs> Not in this one, but the fox is a That very seems very character. unfair, in my opinion. <laughs> that, that would be a little unfair, but who would win if that were the case? I'm assuming the forest. Oh, fox all the way. <laughs> the forest would be like, yeah, I'm going to make sure there's nothing for you to eat in here. Oh, right? no. <laughs> 
Lots of Vox and Boards is coming out July 19th. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Cool deal. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks. Is there, I was going to say, is there any last thing that we've left out? I mean, you've covered a lot. We have so much going on. I know it's a lot to keep track of, so thank you for coming here and trying everything and, out. And displaying my ignorance, <laughs> yes. But if you do want to find out more, you can the always find us. things I do us. for our audience. Yeah. That's, that's right. And for your audience, you can always find us at Play Renegade on Twitter, um, Play RGS on Facebook, and Renegade Game Studios on Instagram. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you guys for checking it out. We really appreciate you stopping by the booth. Thanks. It's been fun. Thanks for taking some time to sit and chat. Yeah, And awesome. make fun of me. <laughs> Have a great so show. You too. Enjoy. Thanks. Thanks.